السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ آئی ہوپ یو آل آر ان گڈ ہیلتھ الحمد للہ سو ان دا پریویس ویڈیو وی اسٹارٹیڈ ود آر چیپٹر نمبر فائیو دیٹ از ان سائڈ دا ایٹم لیٹس ٹیک اے کوئک ریویژن آف آر فرسٹ ویڈیو فرسٹ آف آل واٹ از ایٹم یس ایٹم از دا اسمالس یونٹ آف اے میٹر اینڈ وین ایٹمس come together it forms molecule and when molecules come together it is going to form matter okay good after that we saw three theory quickly name the theory first theory was dalton's atomic theory okay next theory was thomson's plum pudding theory and which was the last one which we studied that was the rutherford theory so we studied the three theories dalton said that atoms are indivisible and indestructible means we cannot more break them and then thomson said that there are same number of positive charge all around the atom and the negative charges are embedded means where there are positive charges na there there are negative charges also then rutherford said that the positive charges are in the center of the atom which means in the nucleus of the atom and negative charges revolve around the nucleus so this three uh, theories we saw so today we are going to start with a new model so the theory which we are going to study that is of scientist niels bohr so in the year 1913 he explained the stability of atom by putting forth stable orbit atomic model model now what he said that atom is always stable now the important postulates of bohr atomic model which we are going to discuss are the electrons revolving around the atomic nucleus lie in the concentric circular orbits at certain distance from the nucleus now rutherford has told us that nucleus is in the center okay which is positive and around that there are few negative charges now what Uh, bohr is trying to explain us that the electrons and uh, which are revolving around the nucleus they lie in a particular distance from the nucleus means there is proper distance at this distance only they are revolving nextly he said that energy of an electron electron means what negatively charged particle particles so energy of an electron is constant while it is in a particular orbit now see now uh, there is a orbit right likewise this is the nucleus so this is first orbit this is the second orbit then third orbit and so on so what he is saying that energy of an electron is constant while it is in a particular orbit now for example i'll show you all if it is in this orbit it will be for example energy i'm just giving an example it will be 10 even if it is here it will be 10 if it is here it will be 10 then if it goes in the second orbit it will be for example 20 here also 20 here also 20 means if it is one orbit it is going to be the same energy wherever it may be but if it changes the orbit the energy is going to change next when an electron jumps from an inner orbit to outer orbit it absorbs energy what it does it absorbs the energy equal to the difference of its energy level and when it jumps from an outer orbit to inner orbit it emits energy now as i drawn the example before okay see if this is a nucleus first orbit second orbit third orbit now let's take um uh, the atoms okay you know electrons now for example this is a electron over here and now what it is said when an electron jumps from an inner orbit to outer orbit it is going to absorb energy now for example in the first orbit it has a energy of 10 then when it is going to go out when it is going to jump out it will absorb hai na how much it will be absorbed for example say 20 okay now next what it says see 
and when it jumps from outer orbit to inner orbit it emits energy now for example if this is the last orbit the energy is 30 when it is going to jump from third orbit to second orbit the energy is going to emit means the energy is going to lessen down so it came from 30 to 20 understood everybody so these are the three things which a Bohr experiment is stating then afterwards some more atomic models were put forth after Bohr's atomic model now first we saw the three conclusions right now again some more models were put forward atomic structure was studied at depth means still more deep study was done with the advent of a new branch of science called quantum mechanics okay new branch of science was developed that is that is called as quantum mechanics so let's see what are those quantum mechanics the first one is atomic structure an atom is formed from the nucleus an extra nuclear part these contain three types of subatomic particles okay subatomic particles now he stated that there is an atomic structure and an atom is formed from the nucleus see always see as i said when you sow a seed a plant is going to grow so likewise when there is a nucleus in a, a atom is going to grow up so this contain three types of subatomic particles now let's see what are those three subatomic particles the very first one is nucleus so the atomic nucleus is positively charged as we saw in the previous theory so almost entire mass of the atom is concentrated in the nucleus which we saw in the theory that the nucleus is in the center as well as positive charge are in the center and the mass is also in the center so the nucleus contains again two types of subatomic particles together called nucleons what they are called as nucleons protons and neutrons are two type of nucleons what are the two type of nucleons protons and neutrons which we will study further see don't get confused what is nucleus the center part of the atom so here the nucleus contains two subatomic particles together called nucleons when they are together henna the together called as nucleons and what are they neutron and protons the first ones are protons. Proton is a positively charged subatomic particle in the atomic nucleus. So protons are always positive. Okay. Proton is a positively charged atomic particle. Always remember proton is positive. See, I'll give you a trick to remember that when proton is positive or negative, proton starts from P okay so it is always positive this is only in the case of proton okay proton is always positive and a proton is always represented by the symbol p and each proton carries a positive charge of positive 1 e okay here e means charge so each proton means one proton carries a positive charge of plus 1 e that is energy charge so 1 e the formula is 1 e that is 1 positive charge is equals to 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 column. So see when the number of protons come together henna, in a nucleus it is called as the atomic number of element and it is denoted by always z. It is denoted by what? By z and it is approximately 1 Dalton which is also denoted as 1 u now the next is neutrons okay neutron is an electrically neutral it is neutral means it is not positive also and it is not negative also it is neutral and it is denoted by the symbol n and the number of neutron in nucleus is denoted by the symbol n see as we see saw the total mass is denoted by z for proton but over here it is denoted as capital n don't we get confused neutron is denoted by small n and the number of neutron the total number of neutron is denoted by capital n 
and also the mass of neutron is approximately one dalton that is one u which is same as proton we also saw that in proton it is same that is one dalton for the neutron it is also one dalton and the next one is extra nuclear part now see the extra nuclear part in the atomic structure includes electrons revolving around the nucleus and the empty space now see whatever the empty space is there now see there are positively charged revolving negatively charged revolving and whatever the empty space is there so that empty space is called as the extra nuclear part of an atom okay so the next one is electrons which we have studied before electrons are always negative so electron is a negatively charged subatomic particle and it is always denoted by the symbol e negative small e with a negative sign and each electron carries one unit of negative charge see we saw in proton it it carries positive charge but electron carries negative charge and as discussed before the mass of an electron is 1800 times less than that of a hydrogen and atom therefore the mass of an electron which is always negative can be considered negligible and we know that the electrons always revolve in a particular orbit around the nucleus and as we have drawn the diagram before the orbit always being three dimensional in nature there are always three orbits so it is called as three dimensional in nature and a term shell is used instead of the term orbit so we can also say it orbit or we can also say it as a shell and the energy of an electron is determined by the shell in which it is present as i said for example the last shell 30 second shell 20 and the first shell 10 this is just a example okay of a energy it can be different now the number of electron electron means negative charge in the extra nuclear part is equal to the number of proton proton means positively charged in the nucleus which is termed as z means same number of positive charge and same number of negative charges and therefore electrical charges are balanced and the atom is electrically neutral always the atom is neutral why because there are same positive charge and same negative charges okay now let's see the uh, structure of a atom all together we studied different different parts now let's study all together now as you can see in the nucleus which in the center nucleus always comprises of two things that is protons and neutrons neutrons are in red color balls neutrons have no sign because they are neither positive neither negative then in the nucleus you can see a blue color ball blue color circle with positive sign why positive sign because protons are always positive charge one e means one positive charge then next you can see electrons right the green color balls that are nothing but electrons and they have a negative sign why do they have negative sign because they are negatively charged particles and then you can see some space hai na between first electron shell and second electron shell here two shells are only shown okay they can be also called as orbit or the shells and the space which you see between the first shell and the second shell is called as the extra nuclear part of an atom okay now let's quickly uh, complete this questionnaire how many types of subatomic particles are found in an atom yes there are three types of subatomic particles found in an atom They, those are proton positive electron which are negative and neutron which are always neutral next which subatomic particle are electrically neutral firstly the neutrons are neutral and when the protons and electrons come together in the same quantity they again becomes neutral next question very simple enough which subatomic particles are present in the nucleus which is, which means in the center yes protons and neutrons are present in the nucleus which means in the center protons are always positive 
and neutrons are always neutral means they are neither positive neither negative next question where are electrons revolving around the nucleus where do they revolve anywhere they revolve no right they revolve around a particular specific orbit or a shell now as we discuss the mass of an electron which means negative hai na is being like negligible therefore the mass of an atom is mainly due to the protons and neutrons see electrons are negligible because they are 1800 times less hai na so always uh, the thing which is considered is protons and neutrons in the nucleus and the total number of protons and neutrons in an atom is the atomic number okay of that element always the atomic number is considered by protons and neutrons and the mass which is denoted that is the symbol capital a now we are going to see the convection to denote the atomic symbol atomic number and mass number which is as follows now see the first symbol az means above a and then z az symbol okay for example the conventional symbol is C six twelve. We always read the below number digit first. Okay, so the conventional symbol C six twelve means the atomic number. That is the proton number of carbon is six. We know how many protons are there in the carbon six, and the mass number of carbon is twelve. Mass means what? Mass is a combination of protons and neutrons total. Okay. now from this it is also learned that the nucleus of a carbon contains six neutrons now how did we understood that there are six neutrons now see here we know that six are the protons okay and 12 is the mass mass means what mass means proton plus neutron now here we know how many protons are there right we know the number that is six so we can easily find out neutrons see 12 that is mass 12 minus 6 so means mass so here we calculate mass minus proton we will get neutron so 12 minus 6 is equals to 6 neutrons so in this way we can easily calculate the neutron of any of the uh, any of the substance now we are going to see the distributions of electron as per the different different models now as per bohr's atomic model electrons revolve in stable shells what did bohr say that there are three shells and in that shells they revolve in a particular distance and these shells have a definite energy means if for example first shell have 10 second shell have 20 third shell will have a 30 energy example now the shell nearest to the nucleus is called the first shell the next shell is called second shell and a symbol n is used for the ordinal number of a shell always the symbol what the symbol n is used for the ordinal number of a shell now the shells are referred to by the symbols k l m n always the shells are referred as k l m n and so on and the corresponding ordinal numbers as i said the shells the, they are denoted as n hai na so the ordinal numbers 1 2 3 4 and so on so the uh, maximum number of electron a shell can contain is obtained by the formula 2 n raised to 2 how many maximum electron can be there in one shell so this is the formula for that and as the magnitude of n increases the energy of an electron in that shell also increases means if the new, uh, electrons are going to increase their energy is also going to increase okay so here a table is going uh, given we are going to complete that the first one the shell is given and we know the shell is as k l m n n so electron capacity we know the formula 2 n raised to 2 okay and we are going to find out the number of electrons now the first one is done for you now k denotes 1 okay the formula is 2 in raised to n raised to 2 so n now we know it is 1 so 2 into 1 raised to 2 1 the answer is going to be 1 so 2 into 1 is equals to 2 now the next is 2 l means 2 okay so we will do 2 into 2 raised to 2 2 raised to 2 means 4 So two into four, our answer is going to be eight. 
next third okay so 2 into 3 ra 3 raised to 2 our answer is going to be 3 3 is 9 so 9 into 2 our answer is going to be 18 next n is 4 okay so 2 into 4 4 4 is 16 and 16 into 2 is 36 okay so here we know the number of electrons by this formula if you want to know the electrons of any symbol we can easily find it by 2n raised to 2 and now for example this was the symbol k l m n okay then n was 1 2 3 4 now if i give a next symbol after n o then the n will be 5 so we will do 2 into 5 raised to 2 5 5 is 25 you know? and 25 into 2 our number of electrons will be 50 and so on understood everybody so that's it for this video once again go and study all the four theories which we have studied which are going to be of very important in the future standards which you will study more in detail in the higher standard so please understand the basics watch the videos again so that you will better understand and always remember this theories till then be safe take care allah hafiz